Hey everybody, welcome to Solo Joke. Today we're getting back to the blanket project. I uh, decided that the difficulty I had with my jeans in the last episode, uh, I should probably just move on to something else for a little bit. Um, so yeah, we're going back to the blanket project and finally putting some t-shirts on the other side of the blanket. So this is a big, big moment and so with Joe history. Moving over to the other side of the blanket. And today we've got some really interesting, really interesting world news. And uh, yeah, I definitely want to stick around for that. Just get, uh, get set up here and get our first stitch in. And the exciting world news is a new material. It's a better plastic. And, uh, that might not sound all that exciting right off the bat, but listen. <laughs> keep just just keep listening. You'll uh, you'll figure it out. It is actually really huge, huge news that'll impact the entire world. So there's a, a new material, like I say, coming out of MIT. Uh, the article didn't say which MIT, but I'm assuming it's the the big one that everybody always talks about. Um, And this material is stronger than steel and lighter than plastic. Or sorry, as as light as plastic, because it, it basically is plastic. And what on earth I'm blathering about is that they've discovered a way of making plastic lay flat. Usually when you make plastic molecules, they end up jumbled and three-dimensional, kind of like that. Now, MIT has discovered how to take plastic polymers and make them lay flat into two-dimensional sheets. So if you can imagine the plastic cells, instead of being all jumbled and three-dimensional, they now lay flat. And now the big thing about this is that when the plastic particles lay down flat, there are no spaces between them and they become impermeable. So I don't know if you knew this, um, but interesting fact about plastic is that it is not airtight. Not truly 100% airtight. It is permeable, permeable to certain size molecules. And uh, So if you have, let's say, food or um, fluids which are sensitive to moisture content, like uh, brake fluid, uh, that sort of thing, then if you would replace it with this new material, you wouldn't have to worry about the permeability anymore because there's there's nothing going to get through those flat plastic sheets. Now these these flat sheets, the structures are called polyamorides. 
and so it is basically just another another plastic another poly material the only thing is since they have figured out how to arrange the structure in that way the strength also goes through the roof so these polyamoride sheets create a coating and if you can think of it almost like uh, chrome uh, the chroming process uh, the process isn't the same but um, the way that the material could be used could be much the same uh, except where chrome is um, more a little bit protective and decorative it's um, still susceptible to, to rusting and, and that sort of thing over time. And this plastic material, this polyamoride sheet material, could be used to coat all sorts of materials, making it impermeable to air and water and stronger than steel. Now to give you give you some numbers to go along with this um, there is a rating system for well there's a few rating systems for strength and one of them is the amount of force it takes to deform the structure. And the strength of this material, um, its resistance to deformation is four to six times that of bulletproof glass. four to six times as resistant to deformation as bulletproof glass. So immediately you see the uh, potential military uses, um, armor, um, anything you know any they could take and coat all of their equipment with this stuff and just make it that much stronger lighter or have the shells of everything you know helmets um, made of this material to make them you know so light they're hardly there you know like wearing a hard hat rather than wearing a military helmet would make such a huge difference in in combat situations and just work or yeah worker fatigue basically people are people in the military are getting paid to be there they're just they're just working you know um, it's a job hazard and it's a very hazardous job um, yeah more power more power to them I tried getting in and uh, I wasn't medically fit I was I passed all the testing I passed all the physical testing and everything but they didn't like some of the medic medications I was on and um, got a chronic back problem so that was a big one but I fat and passed all their physical testing that they had to to get in so I don't know I wish I wish they would have reconsidered that one but no go uh, but yeah this material uh, you know, think about it for even your cell phone, like a cell phone case. You know, you, you can you could drive over this thing and you know not have to worry about it, and it'd still be super light. Um, phone manufacturers could just make the cases from this material, and they would have a thinner product. 
a thinner, way stronger product. So as I'm going around, I'm just making a bit of a, um, oh. a hem, I guess. Um, I just wanted to kind of finish off the edges a little bit. I don't don't want it to be fancy or anything. I just thought it might look kind of nice. And I just wanted to try it, see how it turned out, try some different stitch techniques. I'm just I'm still using my blanket stitch, but I'm gonna try some different techniques as I go go along. Just kind of experiment a bit. That's the thing, if you're making something for yourself, it, it you can just play with it, you know, because you're not worried about anybody else's expectations or preferences. It's nothing like making something that you're all proud of and then it just not being what the person wants. Got a guy working on a vehicle for me once. Never should have done it. Um, went in and he had made some floor plates out of uh, diamond plate. And I hate diamond plate. And um, so I was just like, you know, I wish he would have talked to me about this beforehand. You know, I, I, did mention, I did mention to him that I didn't like diamond plate. And I don't know why he used it. But uh, that, that whole experience was, was absolutely terrible. Um, back on to good world news, step back onto this new plastic, uh, the, pl the product's called, um, it doesn't have a name, it has a number or a designation, it's, a uh, 2DPA-1, if you want to look it up, 2DPA-1, two, two and the other measure of strength that they uh, subjected it to was the yield strength and the yield strength uh, was basically uh, double that of steel so four to six times as resistant to deformation as bulletproof glass and twice as uh, twice the yield strength of steel and you know there's so many So many applications for this, um, you know, just coating construction materials in it to make them stronger and last forever. You imagine a two by four coated in steel, basically. It just it would last forever. You'd never have to worry about anything rotting out, and the coating would give it so incredibly much more strength. Like, this is this is something that can be used and probably will be used everywhere in everything so this is this is this is the kind of news that really gets me excited because it is worldwide it is world changing it will change the way things are made and that changes the world so it's going to be really interesting to see Really interesting to see where that technology goes, and I'm, if it's as good as it sounds, it's going to be everywhere, and it's going to be everywhere fast. And if they can keep the cost down on the process like they say they can, um, dang, you know. change the medical world because of the plastics like the, the plastics involved in the medical world are well, let's just say numerous um, and if you can start using a plastic coating that makes everything impermeable and it's just going to be amazing what you can do with that
the the implications are are never ending. You know, I could talk about this for for hours. And just all the potential uses for it. So I think I should probably move on. And we'll move on to um, nuclear fusion. Cheers. <clears throat> and I realize we've spoken on fusion a few times already, but there's been some new developments. Uh, there's a reactor, a, f a fusion reactor, which is the green, the greener nuclear. Um, there's one in the UK that is still developing, and they did a test, and they said uh, they beat their own record. So they uh, were able to hold a fusion reaction uh, for over five seconds, and that produced 11 megawatts of power and the equivalent of 59 megajoules of energy. Um, so far, this reactor has cost the UK $22 billion. Um, and they're getting to the point that they can now hold a reaction. Um, now, we've spoken about this before, and uh, if you remember the episode, uh, this, this information might be a little bit underwhelming for you as we've already heard out of China that they can sustain a similar uh, fusion reaction for 101 seconds rather than just over five. Um, I guess you start off baby steps um, and they, they did that in China as well. They did a short test and then they did a longer test so that's probably where the one in the UK is going. Uh, doing a shorter test and then a longer test. It's just a a little underwhelming when you've already heard of how far ahead China is on, on that front. Um, but, big step for the UK. They uh, they are making steps in fusion, and that's going to be happening worldwide. You know, um, new reactors are going to be built, and people are going to be doing tests, and they're going to be setting their own records, and yeah, very cool. Very cool that another one is close to up and going, because for a cup of seawater to produce a lot of power. Um, that's, a, that's a good technology, as long as they can control it. And the neat thing is when, if this, if the reaction does go awry, um, they just hit one button and the whole thing shuts down. Uh, so no more, no more meltdowns, no more reactor meltdowns. what they're telling us anyways. Um, now an interesting related story in, in Canada for nuclear fusion. Um, there's a company called <laughs> General Fusion, like General Motors, but General Fusion. And uh, they have come up with a more efficient and less expensive design for a nuclear fusion reactor. Um, and what it basically looks like is a big vehicle piston, like a cylinder uh, in, your, in your vehicle. So they basically put everything that they need for a fusion reaction into the chamber and start to heat it because there's a lot of a lot of energy, a lot of heat involved. So they start heating and get it to a certain temperature. And another part of the process is that um, they need plasma uh, in the reactor chamber. So usually, uh, what they do is they have the fusion or the oh, pardon me. They usually have the plasma in the fusion chamber and this design has the plasma outside of the fusion chamber being created and then injected 
into the fusion chamber while the when the reaction is almost ready to happen. Um, so apparently that's a more efficient and less expensive way to to make plasma. Um, and then once the temperature starts coming up in the chamber, uh, it basically it's basically a piston that comes up and compresses the whole mixture and that compression brings the rest of the reaction temperature to where it needs to be and then your fusion can start um, and then once you you compress your reaction get your temperatures up inject your plasma and then you have your reaction and apparently for a lot less energy input and that's always been the big thing with fusion is that it costs uh, or it consumes more power than it produces because you have to heat everything to a certain point before that fusion reaction can take place um, so if you're putting in you know 12 megawatts of power to get out 11 uh, you know there goes your 22 billion dollars however we're getting to the point that that is changing and designs from Canada this time are uh, set to change the world as well so if you own stock in general fusion I would uh, I would buy more Uh, one last story to today to get away from the technology side of things and get to a, just a feel good, just a feel good story. There's a a number of posters that went up around a uh, neighborhood in San Francisco recently, and what the poster said was kind of interesting. On the posters, it said, My wife says I'm getting weird. It's a good, it's a strong opening line. My wife says I'm getting weird. She says I need to make friends. So I'm making pancakes. And then an address and a date and time. And it worked. Apparently, quite a few people showed up. Um, there was a total total tally of 75, and you know, then ends up meeting a lot of people. And you know, very strong positive reaction from the neighborhood. So they are planning on doing. Uh, doing it again and he's also thinking about going to other neighborhoods to spread the pancake good news so I thought that was pretty cool um, you know a lot of us are Getting a little weird these days. You know, we talked about our social social health. And uh, how your social health can really affect your the rest of your life. So if you need a way to meet people, and you can make something, throw it out there, do it up, just be good to your people.
be good be good to your fellow man and that's how friends come you know be good just be good to people um, you know, this actually reminds me of something you know you're you're probably getting tired of me of hearing me say oh yeah you know I had this idea a long time ago but I did um, when I uh, when I was going to a local folk festival um, what I would do is I would make hot dogs uh, I, I enjoy tending fire so I would keep a fire going and that would you know bring bring some people over to to chat and say you know hey do you mind if I warm up at your fire no problem uh, then you add hot dogs into that mix and see people going by hey you guys hungry and some some people that would go to that folk festival wouldn't eat the entire weekend because it was expensive to get in and it was expensive to buy food there and some people just couldn't do it and some people were just partying too hard you know they were they were running the, the liquid diet And, you know, just meet some people, make some friends, and you never know. You never know what's going to happen. But I think that was a good start. Got a little bit of a section done on this first patch. Oh yeah, I should probably tell you what Uncle Bob's peculiar vehicular extravaganza is. Um, just I'll tell you quick and I'll go through it again next episode. Um, it was a car show. Uh, last place that I worked, I, uh, I asked them if I could put on a car show, and I got to, I got away with it for a few years, and this was the first year's iteration of the, uh, of the t-shirt. So this was t-shirt from the first car show that I ever put on myself. Um, so yeah, I figured that deserved a, a spot on the blanket. Yeah, thanks. A whole bunch for joining me. Um, I'll I'll admit I uh, I had filmed another episode before right before this one, uh, but I forgot to turn my camera on. I uh, I hit the button. I don't know what went wrong, but uh, in that episode I, I talked about everything that I talked about <laughs> already now, um, and I stitched up this uh, this section into into the blanket so basically finished off that corner and that allowed me to to get to the t-shirts so that's where we're at and uh yeah thanks for joining me and i i had my cookie already because i thought i was filming an episode <laughs> before i don't know why i didn't notice that flashing light that's uh that's up on there but uh anyway cheers Thanks a ton for joining me. I do appreciate the time we get to spend together. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes things just don't go as planned. But, uh, yeah, till next time, keep chilling. Don't forget your cookie, even though I've had mine already. Peace.